Today, I'm going to show you how I took an old piece of firewood and a bag of concrete and turned it into this concrete serving board with a live edge inlay. So I found this awesome log a few years ago that was destined to burn in a fireplace and I've sat on it not knowing what I wanted to do with it. I had an idea to make a concrete serving board with a live edge inlay after seeing a really cool video by a maker called the Medustrial Maker. So to get my slab from this, I made a sled for my planer with leftover MDF. The piece could rest in it tightly and pass through the planer to create a flat surface. And this obviously isn't the most efficient method to slabbing wood, and it leaves me with only one piece, but I don't have a bandsaw even close to being capable of resawing wood at this size, so I went with this method and it worked. Now once I had that flat reference surface, I could go back and make passes on each side until it was planed down to its final thickness, which was about half an inch. And I also squared up both sides of the piece on the miter saw. The next day I did some finer wet and dry sanding with 220 grit to prep the live edge slab for a clear coating and I'm using a fast drying spray on polyurethane from Minwax. This will protect the wood from any moisture from the concrete and I ended up doing three coats and while the spray isn't food safe when wet it will be once it dries. And after it dried I drilled holes in the bottom side and then inserted six small screws into the piece and I'm doing this so that when I cast my molding later the screws will harden into the concrete and anchor the wood piece. Now I wanted my serving board to have legs to prop it up and I'm using walnut leftover from a previous project to do that. I started by routing a chamfer into the edges and since I'm not very good at routing I used my belt sander to clean up the surfaces. I then cut them both to length based on the size of my mold and cleaned up the edges on the disc sander. Then I applied the same clear coat and screw method to them so that they too could be anchored into the concrete once it cured. Next I created my mold. I traced out and cut up melamine I had on hand to create a simple box with four sides. I used hot glue to assemble mine, and I've seen wood screws used as well, but found that the hot glue method worked and it was a really strong bond, and I'd only recommend using screws if you thought you wanted to attempt to reuse the same molding. Now for this next part, I highly recommend following the same path that I took for any concrete castings that you do. To start, spread paste wax into all of your corners, then you can apply a bead of silicone sealant to all of your edges, and I recommend using black as obviously it's super easy to see against the white of the melamine. And to get a really clean edge, you can use a super cheap cake fondant tool with a rounded end that you can run along all of your edges. And you can see how it creates a perfectly smooth corner and pushes any of the excess silicone off to the side. Now because you use paste wax in the beginning, you can actually go back after it dries and just peel off any of that excess, which is incredibly satisfying to watch. Then using some mineral spirits, you can clean off the molding interior and get rid of any of that excess paste wax. And then you're all set to cast. I also marked a reference line where I wanted my concrete pour to max out at. Now you want to make sure that whatever surface you cast on is level, mine isn't, so I'll shim it up later after I pour the concrete. One thing I did off camera was use painter's tape to mask off the top of the slab so that the concrete wouldn't harden into it when I cast. I mixed Quickcrete 5000 with water into an empty laundry detergent can and then I began pouring and clearly I massively underestimated how much concrete I would need. I think I ended up doing this five times. Not the best execution. Once I did have a full molding, I shook it up and vibrated out as much of the air bubbles as I could. I also shimmed it up to make it level and then placed the walnut leg into the concrete using this little suspension contraption that I worked up. And I checked to make sure that it was even all around. And you can also see that I used some little foam paper on the right side to make sure that the feet that I suspended over the mold were even. 48 hours later. 
Now assuming you did your due diligence, it is very easy to break apart the mold and remove your casting. For something like this, I recommend waiting at least two days. Then you could have a lot of fun peeling back that masking tape. You'll see as I clean up the ends that there are some small cracks and I'm honestly not sure how to avoid those or what even caused them, but they are mostly surface level and they haven't affected the overall casting. Last up, I wet sanded all the surfaces and edges and corners with 220 grit as best I could and then wiped down the board very thoroughly with a microfiber cloth. And after double checking it was level, I was pretty much done. And I know you're wondering, it weighs about 17 pounds. Okay, so this project is completely finished except for sealing the concrete. Now that process is fairly straightforward. It's a little bit expensive and I don't actually have a concrete sealer, but if I had one, I would just apply a couple of coats to all of my surfaces and make sure that I got into all of my corners just so that uh, when this is actually used for serving food or for potentially cutting things on, it's gonna be sealed and it's gonna be protected from uh, food getting stuck in there or bacteria seeping into the concrete, those kinds of things. There are a couple of things that I would do differently and if you are looking to do a project like this, hopefully these tips might help you. The first is I would use a much finer concrete. Now that could either be Quickcrete's countertop mix or I could even just take the Quickcrete 5000 that I used and sift out a lot of the larger pieces. If you were to take a closer look at this, uh, you would see that even though it looks pretty good, when you actually get up close into some of the corners and the edges, you can see the bigger rocks, you might be able to see more air bubbles that were harder to vibrate out just due to the size and the uh, mixture of the concrete that I used. The other would be just to make sure that I have a really large bucket to um, actually mix up my concrete in right before pouring. I think that's gonna wrap it up for this project. Uh, I had a really good time working on this. It was uh, a lot of experimentation, it was learning a lot of new skills, and it was building on uh, some of the past concrete work that I had done, as well as just, I don't know, having fun with it. If you enjoyed it, please hit that subscribe button or just share this project with somebody who might think it is cool or is interested in doing their own concrete based projects. If you wanna see some of the past projects that I worked on, you can check out this project right here, which is the first concrete project that I ever did. Or you can just check out this project right here, which is just gonna be something random that I've worked on in the past. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys next time.